everybody. Good morning, one more time. Hey, if you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, can we give it up for Jesus? Oh, man, I love being in the house of the Lord. And man, I don't know about you, but no matter what's going on through my week, man, because I really can't control a whole lot of things. But the one thing I know I get to control is my praise and worship for Jesus. Amen. And dude, I love celebrating Jesus. Thank all of you so much for getting back in here in three minutes. I know that is not a lot of time. Uh, with two bathroom toilets, but we're working on that in a new building. So uh, it's going to be a lot better, man. Well, hey, uh, today I want to go ahead and jump into our topic because today I want to talk to you about something that has been heavy on my heart, and it has been heavy on my heart uh, for some time now. And before I get into it, uh, I want to say that I'm by no way, no way am I minimizing those people who need medication or clinical help. I'm just not. And, and by no way am I making fun of people who benefit from medication. I do believe that there are some, some situations that medicine needs to be applied. I believe that with all reality. I think God gave us science. I think he gave us medicine to be able to combat some of the issues that sin created in our world today more than anything. But this is what I also know. I think for people in America, and even when I was a PE teacher, Kids would come in there, and I think from the time that we were little, if a kid has an issue, we got a pill for him. We have a substance for him. I think it's led to a bunch of adults that we have been so used to putting substances and things in our body to over to try to over uh, to try to fix the really what we're just treating the symptom, but we're not really fixing the problem. And because of that, we have not only a lot of people that have their own self medication, but that hasn't worked, so they went to or medication, but they went to self medicating themselves. And we got an issue. And today I want to talk to you about self-medication. And I'm not just talking about a little self-medication. Man, I believe it's an epidemic today. And I believe it's an epidemic amongst the Christian world today. Question for you, what do you self-medicate? What do you self-medicate? And the real question, what I'm saying, what are you self-medicating? Because see, it's usually not the first thing that pops into your brain. Usually there is a deeper issue that's going on. There's an underlining issue there. And the word medicate also means remedy. And what we do, we usually don't medicate or treat the remedy, the problem. We try to medicate the symptom. For instance, we don't just medicate the cold. See, we medicate the coughing or the sneezing. We try to remedy it. We don't, and it, even it comes to a slip disc, the pain. We, we, we try to remedy the pain that it causes from the slip disc. The same thing with depression or anxiety or whatever it is, we just try to remedy the symptom, but the problem with it, it always comes back because all we're doing is sugarcoating the problem. For instance, when we medicate, maybe for some of us, we medicate or we remedy tiredness and fatigue with caffeine or with sugar. We medicate boredom, being bored with social media or playing video games all day long. Or better yet, we try to remedy our insecurities with coping mechanisms. And an unhappy marriage, oh man, we want to throw ourselves into our job, or we want to go buy stuff, or better yet, we want to look for it in another relationship. And here's the truth, because when we self-medicate, all we're doing is we're covering up the issue. We're just putting a Band-Aid on something, and we're not getting to the problem. We're just trying to cover up our symptoms. And I'm asking you today to suspend all judgment, to open your heart, to open your mind, to receive God's word for your life today. And I also want you to know here at the house church, it is not our desire to offend anybody ever, but it's only to open up a channel of dialogue for people. I understand that this issue is a whole lot more complex than just spending 30 minutes and all something. We're going to have all the answers to it. I truly believe in 2020 to do a five-week series called Fig Leaves, and then we're going to call it Living Life Fully Exposed because there's just a deeper issue with this. But I also want you to know we're not scared here at the house church to copy or, or, or to handle controversial topics because this is what we know as well, that the Word of God has the answer to everything that we face. The Word of God has the answer to everything that we face today. And again, the issue that we're talking about, man, it's more complex than just saying a prayer and then everything's going to be all good. 
If you're looking for the title of the message today, we're calling it sugarcoated. Sugarcoated. Man, would you pray with me real quick? Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord. As we jump into this, this tough topic, God, we know it's more complex. But Lord, you've given us the Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us into all truth. God, you have left us your word. God, that is the same today, yesterday, and forever. It's a word that has been tried and tested for thousands of years to be disproved, but God, yet it still remains. And Lord, all the time you're trying to tell us if we would first seek you through prayer and scripture before we go to the world, we would be a whole lot better off. God, I pray today that your word may find lodging in all of our hearts today. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. If you would turn to the book of Genesis chapter three, verse one through 10. Again, I believe when it comes to looking at issues in our life, we always got to go back to the very beginning of man, what's going on. And that's why we got to go back to the very beginning of the fall of mankind. In Genesis three, one through 10, it says the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the fruit or the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Verse two, of course we may eat from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat, God said. You must not eat or even touch it. If you do, you will die. Verse four, you won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open. As soon as you eat it, you will be like God, knowing both both, both good and evil. Verse six, the woman was convinced that she saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom. Understand, she wanted the wisdom. Keep that in mind. It would give her. So she took some of the fruit and she ate it and she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves. Keep that in mind. They sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Verse eight, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, we, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden. So I hid, I was afraid because I was naked. Please understand this is not a new phenomenon in our culture. And understand here in America, we did not create this issue and make be rest assured, there is by no ways can we fix this issue on our own. But the reason why we're talking about it, because I believe that every person in America, we self-medicate with something, we just don't realize it. We just don't realize it because we've been sugarcoated. We have been lied to from the very beginning of time, just like Adam did, just like, or just like the devil did with Adam and Eve. He's been doing it from the very beginning of time. And today we are still sugarcoating our issue. And as I said, this is more complex than just saying a prayer. This is more complex than just taking a pill. This is more complex than making a purchase. This is more complex than just meeting that special someone. This is more complex than just eating that one more slice of pizza. This is more complex than sleeping with that one more person. And this is more complex than spending that extra 30 minutes in the gym. It's so much more complex than that. It's more complex to even putting that bottle back to your lips. This is a deeper issue that we're talking about today. But did you know that Adam and Eve were the first to self-medicate? And we just read that in the scripture, and I want to show you. They sugarcoated their situation, and do you know what it was with? It was with the fig leaf. Their fig leaf was their self-medication but I bet you never looked at it like that. And we're gonna let God's word and scripture show us today. Let's go back to Genesis 3, 6 and 7. The woman was convinced she saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom. That's what she wanted. They wanted wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover it. She wanted wisdom. They were ashamed at their nakedness. That's the problem. They treated the symptom with the fig leaf. Instead of addressing the real issue and the real problem. Understand it wasn't the sin. The sin wasn't that they wanted the wisdom. The sin was the way they went about getting the wisdom. The, The sin was the way they went about it. 
and you're saying, man, you know, it's not a sin that you want to be healthy. You know, it's not a sin that you want to be, you want to be free and you don't want to deal with these issues. But my question for you today is what if, what if the way you're going about trying to be healthy is not God's design for you to be whole? It's not God's design for you to be set free, but the way you're going about it, maybe you're self-medicating, you're just treating a symptom instead of getting down to the root of the issue, you're sugarcoating your problem. Exactly what Adam and Eve did from the very beginning of time. Because see, Scripture tells us that, that, that according to Jesus Christ, that through salvation, that we have the mind of Christ. And understand this, God's desire is not just for you to be well. God's desire is for you to be new. For you to be new, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you are a new creation. The Bible says that Christ has made you new. Jesus doesn't desire you get better. He desires you become new. Can I get an amen? amen. And he wants you to become new, but whenever we self-medicate, we're just covering up the symptom, but we're really not becoming new. We're just continuing to repeat the never-ending cycle. And because of that, we never truly become new. We stay broken in our current state. And that's what happens in today's culture. The way we self-medicate is just throwing ourselves more into our jobs and more into our work when we should be at home with our families. That's the way, man, it could be as easy as this, as as making one more post on social media. There's a lot of people that we self-medicate on social media. There's a lot of us that self-medicate with video games and all kinds of stuff. This is obvious having sex with one more person or going through one more relationship or one more relationship. Looking at one more naked image. Having one more drink. And as I said earlier, you're spending 30 more minutes on the treadmill when you've been in the gym for four hours already. Pastor B. Wade, are you telling me that it's a sin to want to work hard? Pastor B., are you telling me that it's a sin to, to, to want to post scriptures on Facebook? Pastor B, are you telling me that it's a sin to have one drink of alcohol at dinner? Pastor B, are you telling me that it's a sin to want to take care of my body? No, listen, it wasn't a sin for Adam and Eve to want to be wise. It was a sin about the way they went about getting it. Again, it probably is the issue while you're self-medicating. It's not the fact that you want to be well. Maybe you're just going about it all the wrong ways. And you're going about it the way because from the time you were little or from the time scientists and people, the medical profession, we want to tell people, just take a pill, just cover it up, just cover it up. But it never fixes the issue. Again, I'm not against medication. I want you to believe in that. But man, we got to go to the word of God. There is a root scripture for everything that we deal with on this planet. Sin entered into the world, but Jesus Christ came and set us free. The word of God says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom in the name of Jesus. There's freedom from that stuff. There's freedom from it. I'm not saying that at all, but we need to ask the question, why? Why do we self-medicate? Why did Adam and Eve self-medicate? Whether you like it or not, the answer is still the same. And hear me when I say this, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it because according to scriptures, there's two reasons according to this verse that we just read, this passage of scripture from the very beginning of time. And I think, again, I think it's a little bit more complex, but there's a root issue that it comes from. Again, there's two reasons. Genesis 3, 18, it says, when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden. So I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. If you're taking notes, write this down. The number one or number point, number one, why we self-medicate, why we sugarcoat, is out of fear. We do it out of fear. Adam replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid and I was afraid. According to scripture, Adam was trying to cover up his sin because he was afraid of what he just did. He was fearful of God and the consequences of what he did. Again, in understanding this story, Adam wasn't just trying to cover up his sin. What else did you notice? He was trying to handle the issue himself. See, there's many people, many Christians today that we don't want to get help because we just think that we're big enough and we're strong enough to get it fixed ourselves. But how many know we're not? We're not. 
And you got to look at the progression of this family because this is so clear to me. Look at the progression of this is what he did. First of all, to treat his symptom, he sowed fig leaves. And that wasn't good enough. Then what did he do? Then he hid it from God. And that wasn't good enough for him. Because if you continue, that wasn't enough. If you continue to read in verse 12, then he went to the blame game. He started blaming others for it. You know who he blamed? He blamed God. He said, you're the one who gave me the woman. It's funny, but isn't that what we do in our life? Have you ever had a conversation with somebody that had an issue and you went up there and you tried to talk to them about it? And what did they do? They justify it. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, but I don't have an issue. I get people come counseling all the time and I begin to try to tell them stuff and they're like, well, who are you to judge me? Why are you here? And again, I'm telling you, some of the best of the people, it is, I hope you're seeing it. I hope you're seeing the progression of why we self-medicate and where we get to. And I think for a lot of Christians today, where to where Adam was, and today we are self-justifying our self-medication. Because this is why we don't really see it as sin. We don't see it like Adam and Eve eating a tree in the garden. We see it as just a coping mechanism that the world gave us, but really what it was, it was a ploy that the enemy gave you to sugarcoat the issue because he doesn't want you new. He just wants you to think you're better. He just wants you to think you're doing pretty good. And then you get off that stuff, and then what happens? You all crazy all kinds of stuff again. God wants you to be new. And I think it could be both. But this is what I've learned, family. No matter how much we drink, no matter how many relationships we go to, no how long you work, no matter how much money you make, no matter how many vacations you go on, no matter how much you eat, no matter how many Netflix series that you binge on, no how long you watch Hallmark channels, it doesn't matter because if all we do is treat the symptom, we're never going to fix the issue. We're never going to get to the problem when we self-medicate. We just, we just put a Band-Aid on it. We just cover it up. And we really don't fix it. So number one, it's out of fear. Fear, and if you didn't know, fear is attached to all kinds of things. I think it's attached to everything in our lives. Depression, anxiety, guilt, condemnation, worry. Man, the enemy will keep you worrying about something that could happen in your life that it ain't gonna happen in your life. But you can spend all your time focusing on that same thing. And man, it'll get you so, you'll get so scared that you wanna leave your house because of fear. And what we do instead of dealing with our fear, well, I just need something to help me not be so fearful. Instead of God says, man, you're always going to have fear, but I want to show you what you do in the face of fear. I already gave you the solution to it. You don't need to handle your issue yourself. See, my son Jesus handled your situation so you didn't have to handle your situation. So you don't got to handle anger, pride. Those are all self-medicating things. Unforgiveness is a form of self-medicating. Well, I'm justified. I feel good in this. It's a self-medicating. We feel good and we feel justified in our anger and our guilt. Jesus says, man, I want you to be new. I want you to be better. The second reason why? Out of our shame. First reason we self-medicate is fear. The second reason is shame. Verse 7, at that moment, their eyes were open, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. They realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves. Again, there's, there's there's where the Medicaid, there's the remedy, together to cover themselves. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Understand this. Adam self-medicated his symptom, but he didn't fix the problem. I was afraid and I was naked. Write this down. Listen, his clothing might have covered his nakedness, but it could not cover his shamefulness. The fig might have covered his nakedness, family, but it could not cover his shamefulness. And because of that, he hid from God. What is it for you? What are you self-medicating with? 
What are you sugarcoating? What is it for you? What is it for me? According to scripture, there's two things. It's fear and it's shame. Adam and Eve were the first self-medicators and it was fear and shame that led them to cover up the problem instead of fixing the solution or having the solution to it. Your fear, you're afraid of something or someone and you're shameful because you're like, you know what? Well, Pastor B, if the band will go ahead and come, well, Pastor B, man, if you, man, if they, if they only figure out, if they find out what I did, oh, there's no way that they'll ever like me. There's no way they won't like me at all. Well, Pastor B, you know what? You know what? If, if if they find out what happened to me when I was a, when I was a little kid, then then even though I didn't want this to happen and it still happened to me, then people are going to think I'm nasty and I'm no good and, and and I'm none of that. And people are going to think I'm nasty. You know, if people only knew what I did, if they only knew what, what 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 happened to me, if if they only know what I didn't do, what I was supposed to do, then then people wouldn't like me. And it, it would just we repeat this cycle of fear and shame. Fear and shame is trapped to everything that we do. I don't know why Jesus gave my life to you. I don't know why I'm still struggling. I don't know why I'm still depression. I don't know why. What do we do? We just continue to cover up instead of confessing, saying, listen, this is what I deal with. One, finding out what scripture says and then applying it to our lives. But we want to self-medicate it. And I believe you're here today if that's you because I think it's different for all of us. I think you're here because God wants to tell you something about your self-medication. And it's found in Isaiah 61. 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim the captives will be released and the prisoners will be freed. See, we self-medicated. The enemy has sugarcoated to us from the very beginning. We self-medicate because we believe that we will fix the problem, but it doesn't fix the problem. Jesus Christ says he and he alone is the one that can address fear and shame. Second Timothy says uh, that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and peace and of a sound mind. And then Romans 8, it says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power, the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. See, Adam and Eve, they tried to sugarcoat the problem. Adam and Eve gave into the lie today. And I'm here to tell you, the enemy is still trying to sugarcoat it. He's still trying to lie to us. But hear this, because the truth is, the same God that spoke to Adam and Eve is the same God that is speaking to you and me today. And he's saying, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? He's inviting you to come out of your fear. He's inviting you to come out of your shame. He's inviting you to come into his presence to confess. So that not just so you can be better, so that you can be made new. So that you can be made new. And if we're honest, this is what we'll say. If we're honest, we'll be like Adam and say, I hid from you because I was afraid. And then if we want to get even real honest, we'll say, you know what? I'm really enjoying self-medicating. I really don't want to give that up. I'm scared to let go of that thing. And yet I believe there's some medical situations that need medication, I do. But I think for the majority of American Christians today, man, there's something for us. We get a little headache, I need to smoke a blunt. I have a stressful day I need to go home and drink a glass of wine but one leads to five, five leads to ten and for too long you're hammered man I'm at home, I'm all alone, I'm fearful and man I'm not hooked on porn or anything but golly man I sure love to eat and I believe all we've done is we just continue to justify our stuff instead of getting down to the issue and saying God yeah here I am this is really me. If our prayer team will go ahead and come. Listen, this is what I know. I've often wondered this a lot of times in my life. History would only know. I wonder what would have happened if Adam, back in that time, if he would have went to his father and he would have confessed to his father and he would have said, God, 
I'm afraid. I'm ashamed. God, I need help. And God, I need you. I often wonder how different would our world be today because I truly believe in that one moment if that would have happened the holy most righteous God in the world the creator of the heavens and the earth he would have put his loving arms around them and instead of them needing fig leaves to clothe he would have clothed them with his righteousness all again but because of that from that very moment now we're stuck left but something that Adam and Eve did from the very beginning. And because we can't handle the stresses and the things of this world, we go to self-medicating. We go to other things and it's based out of fear and out of shame. What if, what would people really say about me? What if they really know what, what will happen? Will they really feel? Will they think? Will they no longer be my friend? Will they no longer be welcome in this church? Oh my God, I'm here and the house is still here. I'm probably the most messed up than anybody. There's a guy by the name of Elijah in the Bible, man. He was probably one of the guys who did more miracles in the Bible than anybody but Jesus. I mean, dude, he was God, man of power. And dude, he was on this mountain, dude, and he was so close to God that he killed over 550 false prophets. He called fire down from heaven. I mean, he knew that there's nobody that could touch him. And then, and then this woman, Jezebel, said, put a death warrant out, a warrant out for his death, and he let fear and what could have happened worry him because the Bible says he ran in the other direction away from what God called him, ran 200 miles away in the other direction and he went to a cave and he hid. He hid, he let fear, he let shame, he let guilt, all this thing that he was feeling keep him in this cave. But I'm here to tell you, thank you, you gotta be thankful for a God because that God didn't beat Elijah up. He didn't judge him, but he came to him. He tracked him down and said, Elijah, what are you doing? Where are you? What are you doing in the cave? I have, I have plans. I have, I have a purpose for your life. I need you to come out of the dark. And I need you to come into my life so I can restore you. So I can renew you. I just don't want you to be better. I want you to be new. Jesus wants you to be new. The Bible says you have a mind of Christ. The old is gone. And the new has come. I tell you my struggle, many of you know my story, I got up to 300 pounds. 300 pounds, man, I was 175 when I graduated high school. And why? I let fear, I let worry, I let fear of this church going under. I, let, I started to let other people, what other people would say. I'm telling you, Christians are jacked up. You'd be amazed at some people that will love me and they say stuff to me. Totally different than they love me. The stuff they say about me behind my back and they still come here and love me. I hear people tell me all the time, well, I don't want it to be like my old church and I don't want that to happen and I don't want this to happen. You know what? You know what? You should have everybody vote right now. You should be doing this and you should be doing that. And I begin to let people's words and what they said about me begin to judge my calling on my life. And instead of medicating, the enemy knew he couldn't get me in pornography. He knew he wasn't going to get me with alcohol. He's like, but I'm going to get you food. I'm gonna get you food, Brandon, because you didn't know I was an athlete and I always went to a pill. I always went to a supplement. And there's a time that I took this, this drug I put into my body. I would shoot this thing called HCG. And I would eat 500 calories a day because I thought I was fat and I needed to lose weight. And all the enemy did because I never, I never dealt with the issue of what was going on inside of me. I just self-medicated it. And for six months, the enemy was allowed to get me when I was alone. And I was eating whole boxes of cereal and ice cream. And I wasn't telling anybody about it. On the inside, I was losing and I was missing. And the enemy almost took me out of the game. But I'm so thankful because I told my overseers and our staff. And you know what else I did? I started a, a group called Fire Pits with Dudes. And I began to tell them about my struggle and my issue. It even left me to for a week. I didn't even know if I wanted to be married. It had nothing to do with everybody else, but it was the issue that was inside of me. And I'm so thankful for it. I got up in front of you and I told you months ago about what I was dealing with. I'm telling you, if you want freedom, there is freedom, but you're gonna have to get out the cave. You have to get out the cave. And it doesn't matter what people say about you. I love you and I love people, but what you think about me doesn't define me. 
the calling of whether or not you think I'm called to do it doesn't define me, what God says about me. And I want some Christians to start thinking that way. It doesn't matter what a pastor says about you. It doesn't matter what a coach says about you. It doesn't matter what your Bible says or what your boss says about you. What matters what Jesus says about you is that you're forgiven and you're made new and you're whole and you have a purpose and a plan and a destiny for your life. We can't let the enemy continue to sugarcoat it and lie and telling you that you're just going to have to deal with this the rest of your life. You're going to be on medication the rest of your life. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Jesus says, I came to make you new. I came to set you free. For the Spirit of the Lord is there is truth. And I'm telling you, the minute I started to share with people my struggle, when I began to have victory, and it's still a struggle, but as Pastor Jake said, and you got class for me, I'm one hot mama right now, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, Terry. That's what I mean to just, that's what insecure people have to tell ourselves. So where is it today for you? Let's do this. Let's not let the fear and the shame of what you're going through keep you from getting victory in the area that you're dealing with. Bible says to confess our sin. Again, I say, I just don't think we realize what we do. It's really sin. And when Jesus said, confess your sins, or Paul said, confess your sins one to another so you can be healed. He wasn't just talking about a physical healing. He's talking about an emotional healing. He's talking about a mental healing. He's talking about everything in your body. Everything you deal with, every issue you deal with, you can get healing today. But who cares about what people says about you? Man, if don't, you don't got to have that stuff in your life, man. Let's get out the cave today. Let's get into the light. Let's put sugar coat in our issues and get real. And let's lock arms with somebody. Let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you so much for who you are and what you've done in our life. And Lord, I ask right now, Father, as we get into some ministry time, Father, we thank you that you love us and you care enough about us to not leave us in our current condition. Real quick, with head bowed and eyes closed. You're here today, man. You can say, you know what? I've, I've never given my life to Jesus out of fear. I've been told that I got to get fixed. I got to have this issue, this issue done. And, you know, I need to get my life right. And right now I'm depressed and I'm, I'm hurting and I'm grieving on the inside. And I just can't come to Jesus. I'm not supposed to be this way. I want you to know that that's a lie from hell. You can come to Jesus today as you are the way that you are. You come as you are. You say, well, how do I do it, Pastor B? Bible it says just to confess him as Lord in some some translations and some other places it says if you just call on his name the Bible says you will be saved but you got to confess him as Lord and invite him to come into your life first and foremost and to believe in your heart that he is who he says he is and that he died on the cross so real quick this invitation is for if you have never given your life to Jesus you have never asked said the prayer one time no one time this invitation is for you You've been letting fear and you've been letting shame of what you have done keep you from giving your life to Jesus. And today Jesus is calling you out of that, saying, I have a new plan and purpose for your life. But if you're and you've never asked Jesus in your life, simply lift your hand and welcome to call you out. I would love to lead you in a prayer. Anybody that has never, ever asked Jesus into their heart, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So fam, look up at me now. Listen, this next invitation is for everybody else because I'm going to invite some. I'm going to invite you to get up out of your chair. I know we don't have a lot of room, but there's something about making a, a, an outward expression of an inward commitment. When you get out of your chair and you make that physical way to come up here and to make an altar call to find somebody to pray with. If you need prayer about anything, do pray. But I know people all the time, they come in here, they feel the presence of God, but they don't get prayer and nothing changes about their life. They go out the next week, they still deal with the same stuff. I went to church, I did my stuff. Jesus just doesn't want you to come to church. He wants you to be new. He doesn't want you to deal with the same stuff every week. He wants you to invite him to get prayer, to be real with somebody and say, this is what I'm dealing with. My mask is off. Will you pray with me? Will you help me get down to the real issue? Don't let fear and shame keep you, man. But this is between you and God. If you go ahead and stand, as we transition, I want to make this place an altar. If you need prayer, come get prayer. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we surrender to you, Lord God. You know our hearts. You know what we deal with, Lord. But today, we're done hiding. We're done self-medicating. Father, today, we are going to surrender it all to you, Lord. God, I thank you for hearts that are going to be healed, minds that are being renewed right now. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's worship. Let me pray. Come on down.